Isaac Newton gave us the first mathematical model for time and space in his Principia Mathematica, published in 1687. In Newton's model, time and space were a background in which events took place but which weren't affected by them. According to Newton, time was separate from space and was considered to be a single line. Time itself was considered eternal in the sense that it had existed and would exist forever. Time existed independently of anything else. However, in other hand, according to theory of relativity, time and space do not exist independently in this universe or each other. Time and space are inextricably tangled up. One cannot curve space without involving time. So time has a shape. By curving space and time, general relativity changes them from being a passive background against which even take place to be active and dynamic participants. According to Stephen Hawking, a new concept came to understand that is called imaginary time. This film is based on Hawking's imaginary time, CPT symmetry and physical arrow of time. My request is to see its part 1, Entropy Arrow of Time before watching this film, which link I have given in the description. Let's start the video. Stephen William Hawking Stephen William Hawking was an English theoretical physicist, cosmologist and author, and location professor of mathematics at the University of Cambridge. He was also director of research at the Center for Theoretical Cosmology at the University of Cambridge. He tried to unify gravity with quantum mechanics by introducing a new idea of imaginary time. So, what is real and what is imaginary? Is the distinction just in our minds? Imaginary time sounds like something from science fiction, but it is a mathematical concept. Time measured in what are called imaginary numbers. One can think of ordinary real numbers such as 1, 2, minus 3, minus 5, and so on, as corresponding to positions on a line stretching from left to right, zero in the middle, positive real numbers on the right, and negative real numbers on the left. Imaginary numbers can then be represented as corresponding to positions on a vertical line, zero is again in the middle. Positive imaginary numbers plotted upward and negative imaginary numbers plotted downwards, thus imaginary numbers can be thought of as a new kind of number at right angles to ordinary real numbers. Because these are mathematical construct, they don't need a physical realization. One can't have an imaginary number of oranges, or an imaginary credit card bill. Similarly, on the other hand, because imaginary time is at right angles to real time, it behaves like a fourth special direction, which can only have a beginning or an end or go around in circles. It is in this imaginary sense that time has a shape. To see some of the possibilities, consider an imaginary time-space-time that is a sphere like the surface of the Earth. Suppose that imaginary time was degrees of latitude. Then, the history of the universe in imaginary time would begin at the South Pole, 
it would make no sense to ask what happened before the beginning. Such times are simply not defined any more than there are points south of the South Pole. The South Pole is a perfectly regular point of the Earth's surface and the same laws hold there as at other points. Imaginary time is indistinguishable from directions in space. If one can go north, one can turn around and head south. Equally, if one can go forward in imaginary time, one ought to be able to turn around and go backward. This means that there can be no important difference between the forward and backward directions of imaginary time. On the other hand, when one looks at real time, there is a very big difference between the forward and backward directions, as we all know. Where does this difference between the past and the future come from? Why do we remember the past but not the future? The laws of science do not distinguish between the past and the future more precisely. The laws of science are unchanged under the combination of operations or symmetries known as C, P and T. Where C means changing particles for antiparticles, P means taking the mirror image so left and right are interchanged, and T means reversing the direction of motion of all particles. The laws of signs that govern the behavior of matter under all normal situations are unchanged under the combination of the two operations C and P on their own. In other words, life would be just the same for the inhabitants of another planet who were both mirror images of us and who were made of antimatter rather than matter. If the laws of science are unchanged by the combination of operations C and P and also by the combination C, P and T, they must also be unchanged under the operation T alone. That means no asymmetries will be found after reversing charge, space and time. Therefore, CP symmetry implies T symmetry or time reversal invariance. At the atomic level, there are no obvious clues to time direction. An electron orbiting an atom or even making a quantum jump to produce a photon looks like a valid physical process in either time direction. But yet, there is a big difference between the forward and backward directions of real time in ordinary life. Imagine a cup of water falling from hand and breaking into pieces on the floor. If you take a film of this, you can easily tell whether it is being run forward or backward. If you run it backward, you will see the pieces suddenly gather themselves together off the floor and jump back to form a whole cup and back to hand. You can tell that the film is being run backward because this kind of behavior is never observed in ordinary life. Take another example. Suppose you had a movie of some physical process. Let us take an example of a swing pendulum video. If the movie were run back through the projector, could you tell from the images on the screen that the movie was running backward? No, because in that video, the forward and backward are the same.
and we are not perceiving any increase of entropy. And our brain also constructed to memorize the past to examine the future. When both past and future are the same, then we cannot make a difference that time has an arrow from past to present to future. So, final conclusion is that there are at least three different arrow of time. First, there is the thermodynamic arrow of time, the direction of time in which disorder or entropy increases. Then, there is the psychological arrow of time. This is the direction in which we feel time passes. The direction in which we remember the past but not the future. Finally, there is the cosmological arrow of time. This is the direction of time in which the universe is expanding rather than contracting. The psychological arrow is determined by the thermodynamic arrow and that these two arrows necessarily always point in the same direction. The universe must have a boundary. Because if we assume the no boundary condition for the universe, we shall see that there must be well-defined thermodynamic and cosmological arrows of time, but they will not point in the same direction for the whole history of the universe. And we are lucky that we got a universe where all three arrow like thermodynamic arrow, psychological arrow and cosmological arrow of times are in same direction from maybe one of the multiverse. It is only condition which are suitable for the development of intelligent creature. Thermodynamic arrow is necessary for intelligent life to operate. To survive, human beings have to consume food which is an ordered form of energy and convert it into heat which is a disordered form of energy. Thus, intelligent life could not exist in disorder to order phase of the universe. For same law universe need to expand not contract to satisfy the second law of thermodynamic. And this is the explanation of why we observe that the thermodynamic and cosmological arrows of time point in the same direction. The second question is why psychological arrow of time is forward? Because psychological arrow of time is only due to our memory system. Time does not go forward, but human memory remember things like that. So we feel an illusion like forward of time. Take an example where psychological arrow of time is backward. Suppose I broke a cup. We will see broken pieces of the cup that will gather back themselves together and will jump back onto my hand. It will happen when we will remember events in the future and not remember events in the past. This means when the cup was broken, according to the psychological backward arrow of time, we would remember it being on the floor, not able to remember it being on the hand. And universally, death will come before birth. And the most important thing is information. Our brain cannot possess vast future information like Maxwell Demon. He has to erase some information. We all perceive time. We all live with time. The past, the present, the future, which we feel real, 
Like when you start to see this video was the past and now it is present and the coming time will be future. Is time an absolute property of nature independent to everything derived by Newton? Is time in very fundamental level like a virtual particle? Something like boson particle which are responsible for fundamental force? Is time an absolute real thing which acts privately with the motion or combined with space what Einstein told? Is time something else like information in very fundamental level? Similar to heat energy is just a motion of molecule? Is time an imaginary which was believed by Stephen Hawking or something replical of a fundamental thing like information? Or only an illusion created by human mind to measure entropy? Still, it is a hard concept to reveal.